How do you prepare for that? How do you forecast? Well, I'm, gra- I'm glad that we're having the opportunity now to speak to Larry Klein. He's vice president of logistics over at Bring. Larry, we need some answers. <laughs> well, first thing I'm going to do is not use acronyms. And Beautiful. if I do use an acronym, hit the cowbell. Okay. okay. I'm <laughs> All right. to hold, hold me accountable. It's a deal. Um, well, Larry, tell me a little bit about this. So we, we talked about all this demand struggle, right? I mean, it, the global supply chain is really tough to navigate right now. How do you forecast the, the demand when so many of these elements are of the irregular? Yeah, I, th- I think just, just where Bring fits, and maybe I'll, I'll do that first, and then it'll help with the answer to this question. So we're really focused on, on final mile execution. We're focused on uh, helping retailers and logistics companies scale up and optimize and execute their final mile strategy. But all the things you just talked about definitely have an impact, right? Because if the if the merchandise can't make its way to the final mile, if you don't see it, um, you struggle, right? And so what we see with our customers in terms and our clients of trying to get ready for things they can't predict is to really look at their operations and figure out, is there some latent capacity that they have that they can unlock to get so they can't predict it, but they can get ready for it. In other words, you know, I think what they've seen over this this last year is trying to predict what tomorrow is going to be is very difficult. But if you have an operation that is really flexible and and can scale without throwing a bunch of people at it, then you, that's that's more than half the battle. And I think that's what we see. And we see that with uh, within the four walls of of uh, final mile logistics providers. You know, in, in terms of uh, enabling dispatchers to just be more efficient, to focus on the things that matter, to, to out on the floor, to their customer service departments, and then out to their drivers. And it's really about that kind of unlocking that latent capacity, which which lends to getting ready for things you just don't know are coming. Yeah. So, Larry, when you talk about that and you're trying to hit your your service uh, level agreements, right, your standard service level agreements, sure. and you're trying to hit these in final mile, you're looking at you don't know when that container's coming into the port or, or when it's hitting a crossroad. You're trying to get to your final mile, and then you're talking about latent capacity to tap into. How are they hitting that operationally? Because that would seem like you need to be able to flex pretty darn quickly to, to make things happen at the final mile, correct? Yeah, no, great point. Um, and 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 I think what people learned over 2020 is if they're not if they're not ready to flex, then they're pretty much ready to fail, right? Because they just they they really need a platform um, and a, and a technology stack that allow. And I'll give you a couple examples of how you can flex. So one way to flex would be to plug into pre-integrated options, other fleets, right, that you can access when necessary. So these, this is all kind of variableizing your cost. They're not sitting there waiting for you to give them volume, but they're available to you via technology that when you get more than you thought you were going to get, you can access them in real time and not with a human, but with a platform, right? So that's one way. We had another client who actually empowered their employees who were not drivers um, with driver technology just in case they needed to use them out in the field, right? So they said, hey, listen, if there may come a day during peak where uh, we, we, all of you people sitting in the office, you're going to have to go make deliveries. And so we're going to basically pre-train you, teach you how to use the tech. And it actually came to fruition. They, they really did use their folks out. And, and so that's another way. So, I mean, I think it's looking for variable fleets that you can pre-integrate with. And I think it's also maybe looking for for creative ways to uh, to unleash your employees on on this extra extra need and extra capacity. Yeah, I mean, Larry, the, the supply chain is a lot like Chinese finger cuffs. The more you struggle, the, the tighter it gets. The, the more you pay, the worse service gets. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that supply chain is a business driven by capacity. So how do shippers deal with, um, how do they overcome these driver and resource shortages? Yeah, I think, um, I think the biggest thing is, is really understanding how to make what you have more efficient. And that doesn't mean like making people work harder. That absolutely is not the is not the point. I think it's looking at your operations and saying, what do our people spend their time on? And whether these are employees or independent contractors, I'll use this for this the, the same the same comment for both. But what what wastes time? What, what what drives them crazy? And this is very like down to the weeds. This isn't a high level 30,000 foot. This is like, what does my dispatcher actually spend his or her day on? 
Like, are they spending time on things that we could automate? Are they spending time on things that we can address with technology? Can I make them, can I make their job better? And can I make them more efficient simultaneously, right? That's what we have conversations with people about, uh, whether it's a shipper or a logistics company, because ultimately it's giving their employees and their independent contractors the tools to do their job better, but then it's also allowing them to scale. Um, I, I'll give you a for instance. If a dispatcher has to route and optimize and assign drivers and actually manage the loadout, the driver loadout process manually, right? There's only so much that person could ever do. And then as more volume comes in, you need more people, right? But if you take a lot of those repetitive tasks and use technology to do them, now you've kind of unleashed this dispatcher to do the things that actually matter, right? To, to troubleshoot, to exception manage, and, and that dispatcher can actually handle much more work in a much more satisfactory way. And, and this plays out across the entire supply chain. Larry, we really like what you've had to say today. You know, this is our sort of version of speed dating here at the event. Unfortunately, these segments are not very <laughs> long, but I'm sure people got a lot of answers here, but they probably still have many questions. So if they want to reach out to sure. you, they want more advice from you or they want to learn more about Bring, where should we send them to? Uh, certainly send them to me. I'm happy to. I'm happy to interact. Um, my email address is Larry at bring.com. That's bring with two G's. Um, happy to chat about, you know, making your operations, uh, your final mile operations more efficient. Larry, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining us here. And you know what? I didn't have to hit the cowbell Thanks, once. <laughs>